Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this is the third episode on how to bypass the web application firewall series. And uh, this week we're gonna uh, talk about the tools which can be helpful while you do this type of testing, red teaming, or actually penetration testing when you're trying to bypass the WAF. And then we'll also see a couple of examples on uh, how you can tweak the payload based on the things that we have learned in the previous video, like uh, Unicode and, and uh, ASCII and Base64 encoding, so all of those encoding techniques, how do we use to actually bypass those, uh, those application firewall. Uh, so there, there are certain tools out there, uh, as you can see here, W3AF and, and Bypass WAF and WAF Ninja and WFW. Uh, these are some of the good tools uh, that that you can use. Uh, of course, the, there are also like in a paid version of, of some of those tools which are really useful. Uh, but these are these are all of these are open source. So the first one is W3AF. I think we have discussed this briefly in the past and, and if uh, I, I was just looking at my all the videos and, and I can see this one like you know uh, one of the first video that I did back in 2014 which was very funny but yeah uh, that's where I did the, uh, the demo of this tool but since then this tool has improved a lot there are a lot of lot more checks uh, that you can utilize um, of course if you want I can do another demo um, of this tool uh, which is more recent uh, but yeah probably you can you can try this out and this is actually a good scanner as well so for example if you don't have any any uh, professional scanner like Acunatix or NetSparker you can certainly use this uh, as well uh, this one uh, is good in terms of like it pretty much identifies which WAF uh, uh, that application is using so it sends the normal HTTP request and try to identify if it's not successful then sends the malicious one and even if it's not successful then analyze the response uh, previously returned and uses another simple algorithm to guess if the WAF or security solution is actively responding to our attacks so if you see that there it covers quite a few names here so uh, it's a it's a good a good way to start off like to determine if the if the application is using the WAF indeed or not and sometimes if you have used the SQL map uh, that's that's another tool uh, if you see here uh, this one also uh, when you're trying to scan for the SQL injection it's gonna tell you if, if it detects the WAF or not so this also it doesn't tell you I guess like which WAF it is using but at least it will tell you if there is a WAF or IPS which is blocking the request uh, this one uh, which is uh, which one? WAF, WAF bypass yeah uh, so this is actually a bit different so this this doesn't actually detect like which WAF it has uh, of course it, it can but then it, the goal here is to bypass the WAF and, and detect uh, like you know the, the server or infrastructure behind the WAF protected uh, behind the WAF and directly exploit it because uh, because the tool things and, and generally uh, the mentality of the developers are if it's behind the WAF we don't have don't need to put much more controls and protection in the application itself which is completely wrong WAF should be a second or uh, secondary control while the application control should always be treated as primary but yeah the goal here is to find those uh, the dangling resources behind the WAF and then hopefully you exploit and then uh, you can uh, also get access to the other resources uh, WAF Ninja is a CLI uh, tool uh, and this helps penetration testers to bypass a WAF by automating steps necessary to bypass input validation. So you can use for example let's say uh, you want to fuzz this particular URL with this parameter and this value. It can use different different uh, it already comes with the payloads and, and fuzzing uh, uh, the strings so you can easily use that and, and use for bypass. So maybe you can, what you can do during the pen testing is uh, you can take some of the sample APIs and, and try to first through this tool and, and see if anything comes back uh, or you can bypass because uh, like if you if you try to do this by yourself, you might not be uh, very successful. And it's, it's a very tedious process as well, right? To do it uh, like manually. So, so these are some of the tools that uh, you can, uh, you can absolutely use it. Uh, the some of the other techniques that you can do is like junk characters so usually if this is the payload uh, it's it's going to be blocked by the WAF but then you can add some junk characters in between and, and see if you can uh, like you know uh, bypass it uh, 
uh, then uh, earlier we, we talked about different encoding like URL, HTML, Base64, Unicode encoding. So you can try different coding techniques and, and uh, this actually worked uh, pretty great in like, you know, probably five, six years ago when there was not uh, good rules around the WAF and everything. But uh, given that we have these WAF rules, you might have to try this, but also some other techniques to bypass it. Uh, Unicode, <coughs> Unicode, uh, the, the, uh, of course, the uh, I don't think so. A burp came, comes with the Unicode encoding, so maybe you have to use like uh, some some tool like this one. I have linked. I'll probably put all the links, all the tools, and everything in the description. So do check it out if you if you want to. Uh, but yeah, you can you can Unicode encode and then uh, use the uh, this encoded payloads to bypass. Uh, some of the validation that the application has and even at times if let's say application is not behind the WAF but I have some filtering and if you want to bypass you can still use this technique to bypass it right this is a really good uh, way to do it uh, you can also do like HTML representation so as you can see here uh, you can do uh, like HTML encoding and that way uh, the WAF will, will not be able to will not block the request uh, this is an interesting uh, technique where it is double encoding. So what it does is you take the payload, you encode it. You can choose your own encoding. You can try different things and then you encode again and then send it. So when the when the WAF decodes that, it's going to get this one and, and it says, okay, this is a valid string. It's going to let it through. And then hopefully that executes on the on the application or the end user. So that's the goal of the double encoding. And last one uh, is the uh, line break. Uh, a lot of WAF, like you know, has the regex based filtering. So line break can break the firewall regex and bypass uh, the stuff. So here, what we have done is uh, rather than like you know continuing everything in the same line, you just hit like break the line, and then encode as well, and then put our put our payload in the next line. Uh, sometimes, yeah, as I said, like by, uh, WAF works on the works on the line break techniques as well so that that uh, I have had success with this technique in the past so that's why so this is only techniques that I've listed and I've tried my, myself uh, I'm sure there's a lot more techniques out there uh, which you can use utilize and in the in the next video we're gonna also see uh, some of the fuzzing techniques that I'm gonna show you uh, but uh, this is all uh, I wanted to keep this brief uh, series so I'll not go into too much detail but yeah uh, probably if you have any questions uh, happy to answer those leave it in the comment and and if you have any feedback as well uh, i would appreciate that if you haven't already please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel i'll see you guys next week bye